Okay. So the government itself has those four things. We use, we've come up with four theories about how these got created. That, that it got to the point where it is its own central authority making decisions for itself. First one is force theory. Force theory itself is sort of like what it says. These guys, somebody came over the hill, took your land, took you over, and basically had its own government that it brought with it, and by rule of force, ran the show. All right? And that is the only legitimacy, that's the only reason why they really truly exist, um, is to take usually something out for themselves. Okay? The second one is evolutionary. An evolutionary actually is based on the family itself, where, you know, in every family there usually is someone in that household that's real, much stronger than other people, uh, or one that takes the job of running that house. Well, when ha families came together, they made one in charge. When sets of families came together and stopped and created a village, then they would make one person. So it's this family networking that usually produces one person. Sometimes it's one family that gets ahead. Other times it's a very democratic process. Uh, if you look at that Native American history, you can see a number of places where there were, if the tribe didn't like this person, who was the chief, out they went. Okay? The third one is actually divine right. Now, some of you may know it or not, but obviously divine is a um, reflection of God. So this is God's right. When you had people in countries, and we have examples in Europe and Japan and other things, where they believed, the ruler, that there are only people that they have to actually uh, be actually saying something um, that uh, they're in charge of is basically God's in charge, they're the messenger for God, and they're not responsible to anybody else. So the citizens themselves are secondary. And what it makes is like all law really part of God's law. And if you mess with that, you're messing also with the heavens. When, and it's a very, very powerful way to make people do what you want to if you were a ruler. Usually we use the word king in the West, emperor is used in different parts of the world. But it's an extension of not just power, but God. And then last here is social contract. That's what we are. Social, and in a sense, the people itself have come together under contract. So us, the people, come together. We're in charge. We choose the kind of government that we actually want. We choose the people that we want to run. And then we take them out if we don't like them. That's the theory. We also know it can be very, very ugly and look very, very different ways. Um, this really doesn't, this comes out of the idea of the sciences in the 1700s and the 1600s, where people were actually looking at other ways to break down the natural world. They switched it over, some people, to the idea of politics and human interaction and said, well, how can we actually study this? And in that sense, it grew out of well, wait a second, people actually have a value. They ju not, are not just slaves to a king. And so, 100, 150 years after this exists, the American Revolution happens, and almost every one of the framers had a history, when they were actually in school, of uh, being asked to read and understand a lot of the philosophers that created this idea. All right? Um, and this Constitution, this social contract, uh, is the United States Constitution. This is our contract with the people that are running our government. And a lot of debates you see in politics today is if the contract itself actually has been violated or not. All right? Thank you.